Well, today's the day. You guys are finally reaching the end of your theater education. And uh, so this is a very, very appropriate uh, class to be ending on uh, this, this, this last time. So let's do it one more time, once more onto the breach, uh, folks. So last time uh, we talked, we finished up with advocacy. Uh, we, uh, the challenge of, of advocacy and engagement is to build new audiences and partnerships without compromising your aesthetic and without imposing it on other people. Um, so with government... Uh, you know that we talked with Heather and uh, learned a lot of good things about the practical uh, the, the practical issues of dealing with governments and uh, getting things done and making change happen. And we also learned that you have to put your voting preferences on the back burner so that you can get things done and position yourself as somebody who can get things done. But you guys have acting training, so that should really be easy. So, uh, and Heather even said so. So. Um, the pass-fail option is uh, still available to you guys, uh, end of day on Wednesday, so, uh, so take advantage of that. Like I said, I don't think you'll need to worry about it for this class. Um, there is a course evaluation. I emailed you separately about this. It's super, super important to get evaluations in on this particular class. Um, everybody wants to know how it went, including me. So, uh, so please go in and fill out that course evaluation. Today's the last day. So, I uh, very much appreciate it. And real quick, just to overview, the, the final project is the grant presentation, and that'll be happening on Friday. Um, we've covered some additional topics since we first talked about this. We've talked about volunteers and advocacy and community engagement, and today we're going to go on to theater education. I am sure your presentations are all set in stone and well rehearsed and you have practiced verifying your technology setup with a fellow classmate and that you can present and be heard and hear. Uh, but in case you want to further your company with some of these newer concepts, volunteers and advocacy, that sort of thing, uh, I will throw some extra credit points your way if you have those elements in your presentations. So, uh, so with that, I'll see you on the 24th. We also, just to give you kind of a heads up of who is going to be in the room judging you guys, uh, we have a couple of guest panelists who will be assisting with evaluations. Uh, and they've seen these, these, they have, I've picked people who have seen these kinds of presentations a lot in their capacities of work. Uh, first one's Caroline Farmer. You know her. She worked in state government for 17 years. She's seen a great variety of people crossing the legislative threshold, so she will be on hand. Uh, Grace the dog will not, unfortunately, so we don't need to see Grace. Uh, Luann Crumpler is the director of the Carolina Hunger Initiative, which increases access to healthy food for people across the state. Um, she has been active in, uh, in government and corporate and nonprofit public service work, uh, created several successful initiatives, uh, among which the being the Carolina Arts Festival, which partnered with Terrence Mann and uh, the town of Cary to bring Broadway performers in. Uh, she also is on the board of trustees for the UNC School of the Arts and uh, is on the board of the North Carolina Arts Council. So uh, she is very used to seeing this sort of thing um, because they get, you know, they get grant applications. And then uh, there's some other guy who will also be sitting in on this. Uh, we think. We think he will show up. So that will be good. Oh, yes. And this other guy uh, happens to be an expert in theater education, which can mean one of several things, depending on whether you're asking a school or a theater company or a traditional business. Um, it's the final external factor that uh, we theater managers can use to control the environment in which we make art. And so the the uh, I've got uh, I've got a, the, the E is underlined here because I wanted to draw a distinction between big E and small E education. Uh, theater education is uh, the the uh, the process of educating students in the art of theater. at lowercase e, um, and this is something that. Um, the, the big E theater education is something that an organization can and probably should pursue in order to fulfill its nonprofit mission. Um, a theater training program 
Uh, this kind of uh, uh, provides direct revenue for the organization. Uh, it also provides another revenue stream and can be used to engage uh, community organizations. So we're going to talk about three different kinds of theater big E education. There's, there's theater little e education, which is educating students in the art of theater. And then theater in education, which uses theater as an instructional tool to educate students in other disciplines. Um, and then educational theater, which is custom-built theatrical productions that are, are um, uh, engaging audiences on a particular topic. Um, so, um, so yeah. So it's it, you know, theater education is it's important to have a plan for that, for that within your organization. Now, theater organizations can facilitate and produce all of these things. And uh, there are various reasons why they want to do that. There's revenue diversification, like we talked about uh, a couple of seconds ago. Um, you know, it, it, it's useful for engagement also, for engaging community organizations and businesses, uh, developing a product that can train a workforce or educate students on other topics. And finally, it develops an appreciation of the arts in children and adults ensuring that there is a new supply of audience members for our work and that there is also people who can produce it. So as part of a theater's education plan, capital E education plan, uh, theaters can develop a theater education program, little e. Um, and uh, most often, well, one of the ways that this uh, shows itself is in uh, in-house education programs. Um, which provide early theater training to make good, uh, skillful performers and technicians. Um, but some of the other value for an in-house education program for a theater is it makes good workers. You know, the ability to read an audience and control the reaction is a really valuable skill if you're trying to develop leaders. And you know, the creative process is something that you know lots of organizations are touting as necessary in, in this day and age. And, you know, in order to develop new products. So we need to be able to be creative if we're going to innovate. Um, the uh, the, uh, the book warns about your program maybe making too much money and, and taking focus away from the mission um, because these programs can be extremely lucrative. But uh, in my opinion, that's putting the cart before the horse a little bit. Don't worry about it. Build a program. Oh, darn, we have too much money coming in. Um so in addition to actual theater education uh, and training, simple exposure to theater programs is, is extremely important also. That constitutes education too. Um, and this is kind of where the school field trip falls, right? Uh, theater charges some discounted fee per child and they get to come see a, a show. Now touring companies exist that uh, that all they do is they produce productions and then they rely on the presenting agency to actually market them. Uh, one of the big companies that does this is TheaterWorks USA. They've been in the in the business for you know 56 years according to their website, um, and they uh, they produced really top notch uh, touring uh, productions for uh, young audiences. And sidebar, if you are still nursing a uh, theatrical career aspiration on stage, uh, working for them is a really great way to get your equity card and then also get health insurance. So um, just uh, put that, put that in, your, in your head. So in earlier classes, we also wondered aloud if education made a difference in audience growth, and it does. This is a, uh, an NEA survey uh, that they do every five years um, and it's called the, the Survey of Public Participation. And uh, every five years, they ask various questions about what arts events people attend. And you can see here, uh, if we chart this over the five years, five-year gaps that uh, that they've done this uh, surveys here, um, you can see this is this is a line that represents um, people who did receive arts education. Uh, in their youth and people who did not receive arts education in their youth and the percentage who attended an art event in this particular year. And you can see there is a, uh, a very wide gap between those who did receive the arts education and those who did not. Um, also, look, interest, look at the um, right around 2001. Um, 
uh, an act called the No Child Left Behind Act was uh, started in this, in this country. And uh, it basically it, it gave federal funds to schools that met performance criteria in math and reading and, and STEM uh, programs, that sort of thing. So schools may have diverted funds from arts programs. So that may have been a um, kind of a uh, unintended offshoot of No Child Left Behind. So you can see there's a pretty steep drop off after 2001 of people who have not attended and who had not received education. So um, now there's, there's also a general decline starting in about 2001, 2002. Um, that's been going on uh, this, the, the most recent years, I think 2017. And uh, that is probably uh, internet or you know alternate alternative forms of entertainment and arts events. Now, maybe what they need to do is uh, expand the definition of uh, art events. Um, now, of course, maybe they, they really only care about the ones that you pay for, but um, art events can be experienced online too. But um, anyway, I think that's probably technology. So, uh, but a theater education program. Uh, small e is a, is a good thing for theaters to undertake. So educational theater, though, um, is is a is another offshoot of, or another branch of uh, theater education that uh, theaters can undertake, and this is really productions that are used to educate audiences on a topic, um, because students are audience. You know, students are an audience, and what do we mean by students? Students, like it could be anybody, right? Um, so some examples of educational theater, obviously we talked about theater for young audiences. Some productions are pure entertainment, but Theater Works USA is actually doing this production called We the People, which teaches about the three branches of government, uh, the First Amendment and presidential elections and democracy and the judicial process and stuff like that uh, with a boy band, which is kind of cool. Um, training videos. Uh, these are the ultimate expression of educational theater. You know, how much airplay has your average airplane safety video gotten? And they've gotten more and more creative too, right? So there's a, there are production companies that have that 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 execute on these. Um, and uh, you know, the challenge is to make these videos as entertaining as possible so people pay attention. Uh, training videos, just in general. Uh, not just you know, not just your your flight safety videos, but they're a mainstay in corporate life and corporate education. Industrials and trade shows. These are uh, large companies that have money and they know the value of educational theater to sell products. Um, so there are these formal trade shows where productions are staged and companies hire presenters to conduct product demos and the like. Um, this down here is this is a screenshot of a. a casting and modeling agency that produces and casts various events for companies. Um, and you can see that it's not, you know, nowadays it's not even just limited to the trade show. Um, they're doing things on the road. They've got a, you know, a street team for Lyft that's doing some, uh, some engagement there. Um, and then these custom produced productions, you'll see these. Um, this is a, a show called Who's Got the Keys, which was a musical that was produced by the Journal of Nursing Jocularity, which is uh, a, a, a fun publication for the nursing uh, uh, profession. And it was, it was designed to educate medical professions on the importance of patient care. And it used common situations that medical professionals found themselves in. You can see, see the rave reviews here. The most hilarious true-to-life musical depicting the reality of medical care, a must for all healthcare positions to, uh, phys professionals to see and hear. And actually, <clears throat> my mother was in this about 20 years ago. So, so uh, shout out to mom. So, there you go. so if we think of the audience as comprised of largely students, um, theater in education looks at the audience's age and the ability to process information and then develop ideas through storytelling looks at how to use the tools and the practices of theater to teach other subjects other than theater. So you've probably had this in, in school. You had a history teacher who plays the role of a famous character, or uh, maybe you had to dress up to, you know, reenact like a, a, a Western scene or something like that. Um, so teachers and professional actors can portray scientific and historical figures. So, so you know, this is, this is the... The concept of storytelling is just an engaging one, and um, it, it activates another method of learning within your brain. 
And a great example of a business that's built about, around this is the New York Simulation Center, um, which does, it's a partnership between the City University of New York and uh, the, the Lango Medical Center in New York. Um, so it, it, it basically has these standardized patients uh, for med students, and they hire actors to portray um, to portray victims of various diseases. They also do training for first responders, so firefighters and EMS technicians. You know, you have actors who are prepared, who are you know, pretending to be in burning buildings or you know, suffering heart attacks, that sort of thing. So there was an article in the Village Voice that I found here, and it's, uh, there's a link to it if you want to check it out. Um, but these are. Uh, uh, there was, this was a, the writer went and actually uh, was one of these actors, and, and they described it. So, it says, it's a long day's work. From 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., we play a scene 24 times. It's also important work. These objective, structured clinical examinations, as they're called, they let students and residents practice communicating with and getting information out of patients, sometimes in awkward, sticky situations. So... Theater in education. This is a perfect example of how to use the theatrical tools um, to, to learn something that is not theater. So those are your three different types of theater education. Um, now the bigger question is, what are you going to do with them? What are you going to use? What are you going to do about it to enhance your company? Now the answer might be nothing. You might say, well, we don't have the people to do anything beyond cast and produce the next show. But your answer also might be there's an economic stimulus bill in our state that has a chunk of money devoted to schools in our city, so how can we leverage that? Um, so maybe with a little advocacy skills, you can build a theater education plan that will what will still fulfill your mission. Um, so the, the, the goal is to, to put something in place now. Um, to look at your strengths and your weaknesses as an organization and say, can we do this? Um, because as we heard in, in, you know, in, in, uh, uh, when, when Heather was talking, you know, these things happen fast in government. These opportunities come up very quickly. And, and this may not even just be a government you know, a program or a bond or something. Um, you could be approached by somebody you know, in the course of, you know, after a show that says we want you to do something, you know, let's set up a training or set up a tour. Um, and you need to have a plan for that. So so maybe not necessarily having, you know, uh, something that you're planning, that you're going to be acting on immediately. Um, to have a plan in place is important and to kind of think through that. Um and, and, and then once you figure that out, if you look at your environment and you say, well, we really want, or, or if we have a strategic goal of diversifying revenue, then what we want to do is you know, focus on new product development uh, and maybe have a theater education program or, or develop educational theater. Um, if I'm looking to partner with a business, um, I'm looking to, I want to focus on community engagement, really. Um, and that is where educational theater comes in. Um, you know, we can develop something that, that uh, is, a, is a training program or something like that. A um, couple of things to watch out for, though, when you are developing a theater education action plan. First of all, relevance. Um, the program should be relevant. There are themes and production values and topics and casting decisions even that have resonance and meaning into, in society today. So the, the theater education program is, is not static. It's just like the theater itself. It should, it should develop uh, to reflect what's happening in, in current society. Um, you know, once we have the children's theater version of Henry V, we, can, we, we, we can't do it forever. We can, we can do it for a couple of seasons, maybe. Um, also, the educational aspect has to be paramount. Now, you may have some teaching experience. You may have taught classes or choreography or directed um, but teaching and education are separate skills. Um, if you're designing a curriculum with objectives and ensuring that these educational goals are being met and you know, understanding how and when students learn best, you need access to educational resources and expertise to make sure that your program is successful. And also financing uh, and paying for the program's development. These go more easily when there is an educator or somebody knowledgeable in how to put these funds to work. You know, 
of, and, and, and partnerships with, with good liberal arts universities with the BFA program might be a really good idea if you're trying to uh, develop a theater education action plan. Hint, hint. And I told you this was going to be a short video, and uh, so we've reached the end. Um, there's a participation quiz that's due uh, today, Wednesday, so uh, make sure you take that. Um, I know that this has been a really tough class, especially uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, but I'm, I'm really impressed with how you guys have risen to the challenge here. You've learned a lot about how to work in an arts organization. Uh, I, like we were saying before, I, I would love to see each of you start a theater company. Um, I'd love to see you do something big. Um, but, you know, it'll be big whether it's your individual careers or you start your own company or you do both. Um, I have really enjoyed getting to know each of you, Nathan and Molly and Sheridan and Julia. Um, it's been a privilege to be part of your lives these last couple of months. So um, if you ever want to reach out with a question or just want to put me on your mailing list, I uh, know that I am a fan. So thank you for letting me uh, teach you guys for a couple of months here. Um, final project uh, presentation is 1030 on Friday, so I will see you there, and there is the link. Uh, and uh, so long, farewell.